So it's July 9th today, and uh, we're uh, just basically the calm before the storm of uh, full production here on the farm. And I thought it might be cool to do a video kind of explaining what life is like for me right now and everybody working here at the farm because we're you know the energy is a lot different than it was about two months ago and one of the reasons why i haven't been able to make many youtube videos lately is because this is uh my primary income source right now so i'm kind of focusing on this and uh it's a lot and um we're producing about twenty eight hundred dollars of vegetables a week right now and it's still not really full production we'll be doing like four thousand in a couple weeks in August and <clears throat> everything you see behind me is kind of the culmination of all the work that's been going on basically since well the field really been working on it intensely since April but it's pretty cool for me because it's been an absolute herculean effort to get this field to look like this this year because we had uh basically half of it was covered in dandelions that were about this thick this long the roots and i did a lot of hand digging them out and we had a little bit of employee help there um and this season also had a huge problem with it had having enough labor um, i just now got a really good crew that started about two weeks ago basically and that's been amazing um huge game changer because running a farm like this with by yourself is not sustainable. You just, you know, it takes about a hundred hours a week of labor to make this all happen to look like this. Um, and I was doing it pretty much by myself up until two weeks ago. So it's been a pretty brutal couple months for me, but it's all worth it now cause it's all happening. And, um, <clears throat> but the, uh, yeah, the energy is pretty intense right now, and it's um, it's nice to have three, three or four people here helping, um, just doing the harvesting and keeping the product moving because that takes a lot of the weight off my shoulders. Because um, I'm I've done this all for a couple years now, and I'm really fast at doing all of the work, but it's it's not really fun when you're going fast. It's exhausting. You know, when you're hovered sting like a hundred bunches of carrots an hour or something, that's not fun. That's just hardcore work in your sweating, burning a lot of calories. It's not really fun. So that's kind of what life is like right now here, but it's, it's literally just changed since we got the, the help last couple of weeks. Um, it's much more relaxed, but it takes a lot of people to make all this happen. Um, and I thought it'd be cool to go over a little bit of what kind of vegetables make that kind of income for a farm like this every week. Um, cause we grow about 20 or 30 different vegetables here. Um, and every farm like this all over the country has a completely different situation. So it's kind of interesting to hear each farm's, you know, situation. And we're here in Cody, Wyoming, so that's zone 4B basically. And uh, we have really cold winters, really cold pretty much entire year. Even right now, it's only getting to like 50 at night and it's, you know, July. Most other places it's way warmer than that at night. So it's very cold here. So we pretty much had to go grow cold weather vegetables to make this business work. Um, so like, what I'm going to do is walk around the farm a little bit and show you a little what different vegetables we have producing and how that turns into $2,800 to $4,000 a week. So hopefully you enjoy that. So right here, we've got a whole bunch of different crops, but this is pretty much the number one moneymaker for this business. Um, and that's Salanova lettuce. If you're a market farmer anywhere else in the country, you probably know what this is. It's pretty popular. This is what you grow to make really sexy salad mix to sell at the market. And it's just let it cut leaf lettuce. You cut it once a week and it regrows uh, into a whole nother head. We just cut this one today. Today was our salad greens day. And salad greens are a big way to make money with this kind of stuff. Um, it's 
huge part of the business. We sell a ton to local restaurants and a ton at the farmer's market. You know, we could sell 20, 20 pounds easily at our small market at $10 a pound every market. And that's, but you, the thing about lettuce is it's hard to sell it by itself. You have to have other products that get people excited to sell lettuce like that at that price. Um, but it's really how you make money is, is how you pay the bills. It's lettuce. And most market farms are doing stuff like that with lettuce. We also grow a lot of head lettuce, like just a cut romaine or something like that, or a cut red leaf. We'll even grow this exact variety and cut it and just sell it as a whole head for $3 a piece. That works pretty well. But lettuce is the number one money maker. It's the least amount of work. Um, it's, it's just kind of the backbone of any small farm business, vegetable business. Um, and uh, we do really well with it. It's taken a while to build the market. Um, you know, another thing I should mention is in my context, we're in a very small market here. This county has 26,000 people. So I'm selling to one little farmer's market a week right now and restaurants. I have a small veggie box program in the summer. And um, most of our sales are still at that Saturday market. But I mean, I bet you there's only like two, 200 people that show up, two, 300 people that show up at that market every week. So we do really well with that just because we're selling not just lettuce. We're selling like lettuce, tomatoes, carrots, and stuff like celery. And people just buy a lot of that kind of stuff and fill up for their, um, you know, fill their fridge up with all sorts of stuff. So that works really well. And, um, I think it's a cool context to share because a lot of other market farms are selling into a big city um, and that's a totally different kind of thing. You know, it's easier to sell huge volumes of this kind of stuff with, with that because you're seeing a couple thousand people. So, you know, we're doing this in a really, really small market, um, which definitely adds a lot of complications. You kind of have to know every one of your customers, um, but it works. And uh, we're actually probably going to go to another market this summer to, to get a bigger market because I need to get a bigger market to sell you know, the, to reach the goals that I want to reach with this farm. But, um, just a little, you know, we're, just to throw a number out there, if you're into numbers, I talk about numbers a lot. It's, we're doing about, um, $1,500 a week at that market right now. And it's kind of, I think we'll probably peak at about 2,300 or something. Um, once we have everything ready. So, um, you know, that's a fairly decent income for you if you don't want to go to a big market, you know, um, if you don't want to kind of grow a farm as much as I want to. I want this farm to be a $300,000 a year farm. Um, you know, with those kinds of numbers, you need to you need to get some bigger markets and stuff. So, but anyway, this is lettuce and then celery is another really big moneymaker for us. It grows really well in Wyoming and nobody grows it at home. That's another thing with all this stuff. If you grow stuff that people don't grow in their gardens, much more likely to sell it. And it also matters, everything I'm talking about here yields a lot in a very small space. So we're not growing potatoes and um, you know asparagus to sell. Those things do not make a lot of money on a small scale. We're only a half acre farm. So we're growing something that we could get like, this bed of celery right here will yield us 180 huge heads of celery that I might be able to sell for anywhere from three to five dollars each and celery just people go nuts for this if you've never tasted celery from a farm a uh, local farm you're missing out it's one of the best things to buy at a farmer's market it is so delicious it there's just no other it, it, it blows the stuff out of the from the store out of the water um huge money maker for us we quadruple the production of it this year because it's so popular so those are a couple of those we're going to keep moving here all right, so we're right by our outdoor carrot bed. Beds, we do four beds out here. Um, actually, it's a lot more than that, it's like 10. Um, and carrots, that's what these are. They're a, also a huge money maker for us. We're selling about 90 bunches a market at $4 a bunch, which is very expensive. And, um, I'm guessing that's going to go down just because when you start bringing this stuff, everybody goes crazy and buys lots of it, but it's a huge money maker for us. It is just a guarantee paycheck. When you have carrots in full production, um, you're, 
always going to sell them because these kinds of carrots, this is a mokum carrot. Uh, it's called mokum. That's the variety, or uh, we also grow Nap Napoli, but it's a hybrid Nantes type, and it grows into a beautiful cylinder that you that just is the sweetest carrot you've ever tasted. And it's really fast growing, and um, we do really, really well with it. We grow it most of the season. We haven't quite mastered growing it fresh all year round yet, but we have storage carrots all year round at least. And um, it's been a huge success. We had uh, one bed that we planted in February, actually. That was the first time I got that to work. And it was ready about last week in May. It was ready. Um, I was hoping that would work a lot better. but Because um, if you plant that early, sometimes you can get them as early as April. But there's a whole that's a whole rabbit hole. But having fresh carrots at all times... If you could get that to happen, you're going to really do well with this kind of business. People go nuts for carrots. Everybody knows what they are. Um, and they taste phenomenal. They're a really big money maker. We get about 150 to 250 bunches per bed, just like this. This bed's probably going to only be 150 because the germination is not very good. And it's another one of those that most people struggle growing in a garden. Um, so everybody was going to come to a market and buy them. So it's huge money maker for us. We keep on growing the production. This year I'm actually might have too many right now, but we'll see. Um, we're, we just harvested 150 foot bed Monday that got 240 pounds of carrots. That's a new record. I've never seen that before. And it's just because we got perfect germination and everything went right. And that's just really, really profitable as a business crop. And anything you don't sell at the market, you can break off and sell uh, bagged for like $3 a pound at least, and you'll be fine. Um, cause people just really are willing to pay more for those kinds of carrots. They go crazy for them cause they're so sweet and delicious. The other really big moneymaker here is cilantro and dill. Um, we do really, really well with these crops because they grow a truckload of yield in a small space. You know, we've cut this bed twice already, and I think we're going to get a third cut. Um, and we did these with that paper pot planter, um, which you'll see a lot of farms, but it was basically a tool that pulls this paper chain in the ground made by Neversink Farm. And um, this is pretty much all based on Neversink Farm farm course. That guy's channel um, is amazing. And um, that's pretty much how I learned how to do all this. So if you want to learn how to do this, go to Neversink Farm's channel on YouTube. Um, this is it, pretty close. Uh, copy of what he's doing because I took his farm course, but um, not quite as nice yet because we still I, I didn't get uh, the cultivation done very well this year, so we got a little more weeds than he does, but we're getting there. But these are really profitable. Um, restaurants love them, uh, and you know we're selling just lots of them at uh, the market. They're great for a veggie box kind of thing. Um, they just work in a lot of different contexts. And since we're such a small market, we have to do more than just one farmer's market a week. I got to sell to some restaurants. I got to do a veggie box program. And then I have a little, uh, I have an uh, online farmer's market on my website where people can buy there. So that kind of makes the whole business work and gets us that $2,800 a week. Um, but yeah, this is our, once you get really good at this kind of farming, you can have succession planting. So this bed was harvested this week. This one will be harvested next week and just keep that production going like crazy. But then it'll regrow and you get more. So anything you can cut and come again, really profitable. And then all this kale, this is all kale, uh, curly kale and black kale. That's also the same thing. We pick the outside leaves of that and it just grows like crazy. Um, I'm, I'm definitely got too much of that right now. We got to figure out how to i gotta get a little creative on selling that but um kale's a little harder to get people excited about i love it but um that's a really profitable one too we're not even gonna we're gonna just keep that bed going all season and not even re replant it to something else because a lot of this stuff we will harvest it and then reharvest and replant something else for the fall to keep the production going but um kale all three of these are really, really profitable, good business crops. So last but not least is tomatoes. Tomatoes are an emotional roller coaster on a farm. Um, I've been doing it 
only I've only been growing tomatoes like this for about three years now, maybe four, and I'm still learning a lot. Tomatoes take a long time to get really good at. Um, and your context matters a whole lot for these. So these are like, um, especially in my climate, you know, our nighttime temperatures really barely ever get above 50. And that makes it hard to get tomatoes because they like a nice warm night. Um, you know, I, I could probably even spare some propane to heat these right now because it's still pretty much getting into like 48 degrees at night. Um, we're about to get some 95 to 100 degree weather next week. That's going to really start this. All these green ones are going to start ripening like crazy. But if you can do it and get, you know, a couple hundred pounds of tomatoes a week, you can make a lot of money on a farm, especially in a climate like ours when nobody grows tomatoes at home. I mean, a lot of people can do it. Um, everybody wants to grow tomatoes at home here, but it's so cold that like 75% of people fail. So these are very valuable because of my climate. It's not going to be the same everywhere, but we can sell these at $5 a pound right now for a good six weeks. And that probably made a lot of people have a heart attack because that sounds really expensive. But in my climate, that's kind of what they're worth. And they sell out like crazy. You know, ultimately, this is a business, it's supply and demand. And, um, you know, we have the supply, not many other people do. And they taste really good on a BLT. You know, everybody likes a BLT at this time of year. Um, and so we grow three different kinds. Uh, in this greenhouse, we've got, these are our beef steaks. Um, that's the most popular. Everybody wants this. This is your BLT tomato. We've got heirlooms behind me. There's three different kinds. There's a yellow, red, and uh, purple. And then there's cherry tomatoes behind me. And these are all grown vertically up the trellis. Um, and lots of work in these. These are really... They're profitable for sure, but there is a truckload of work into these. I mean, I'm putting an employee on pruning these things probably five hours a week, 10 hours a week. Um, we have two greenhouses of tomatoes, so it's not too bad. Um, so there's a lot of tomatoes here. This is only our first planting, and it's just now really producing like crazy. We'll probably get tomatoes from these plants till at least mid-September or something. But um, yeah, each one of these beds is going to probably earn a couple thousand dollars they're very valuable so we're getting you know we're just starting to pick them a lot i think we picked 70 just 75 pounds of slicers and 20 pounds of uh cherry tomatoes in here today because today's tuesday that's when we pick the first picking and then they'll do another one on friday so we're going to probably get about 150 pounds 200 pounds this week but we're going to st start getting 300 pounds a week next week. And it's just when you get that kind of money I'm talking about, it's pretty profitable. 300 times five is $1,500 a week um, in just tomatoes. So it's a big part of the farm. And the real value is it makes it easy to sell the things like lettuce, cilantro, dill. All that salad stuff goes with this product. And it's much easier to sell those products, which are way easier to grow. And we did the same thing with actually, we had a really good crop of sugar snap peas just a couple weeks ago that we got like 60 pounds on one bed at $10 a pound. That's pretty good money. That's $600 for one bed. And that made it so easy to sell all the other really easy to grow stuff. So that's kind of the business of this kind of farming is like getting the really sexy crop at the same time as the boring crop that makes you a lot of money. Stuff like sugar snap pea shoots, those are so easy to grow, a lot of, and they make a ton of money, but you can't just go to a market around here and just sell those. So if you have those and tomatoes, you're doing really, really well. Another one, I'll, uh, I'll probably take the camera over there, but we got cucumbers on the other side. That's a huge moneymaker too. And you know we're getting $2 a cucumber, like 100 cucumbers a week just on that one bed probably minimum, and that's not even that good. I mean, we could be doing a lot better. Um, that's another rabbit hole I'm still learning. It's on my second year growing cucumbers. But 
that's just a little glimpse on the business side of a farm like this. Um, I think it's interesting. I guess I'm a geek about business. I really like business, all kinds of businesses. Um, and I think this is a really cool business that I wish more people did. So um, that's kind of why I wanted to make this video. And I didn't have any other better ideas at the moment because I'm just, this is a, a side thing for me. So, um, yeah, I'll probably make more videos like this over the summer, uh, but I'm pretty busy right now. Running a farm is exhausting, and um, I don't really want to make videos when I'm tired So uh, and just not thinking straight. And today I had a lot of help, so I was actually really relaxed um, because running a farm like this and starting one is... Uh, it's a challenge. It's definitely not for everybody. It's, it's very difficult. Um, especially, you know, if you got to work really hard to sell the product, it's, it's a challenge. It could be exhausting. So, um, uh, I'm pretty used to it at this point, but you know, it's, I was bedridden on the 4th of July because I had no help basically that week. And I harvested all the stuff I was talking about. We still probably produced about $2,500 of vegetables that week, and I pretty much harvested all of it myself. When you do it like that, it's not fun. It's horrible. I, my back, I could feel the blood pumping in my back. It was killing me. Um, you don't want to be doing this by yourself. But if you have the right labor and uh, have that all figured out, it can be a pretty nice business for anybody that's interested in this kind of stuff and um, crazy enough to do it. So hope you enjoyed that, and I will see you in the next